Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. As you know, I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge advocate of the mechanics of deception. In many cases, the mechanics, the way it works, the sleight of hand is often so much more beautiful than the trick, than the magic, than the prestige itself. And the trick that I'm gonna teach today, Charlie, is a very good representation of that very idea. By exposing a trick, we get to appreciate just how beautiful it really is. Charlie, I think my sausage is burning. That's not a euphemism. It smells like my kitchen's on fire. I'll be right back. I am Daniel Madison. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Charlie Madison and I truly appreciate you choosing to spend a bit of time with us. So, thank. In this video, I'm gonna teach you something that I used to call base deal. It's essentially a card switch that happens whilst you're dealing a single playing card out of your hand to a table. The method is simple, however, it is quite difficult. So this one's gonna take a lot of practice. It mixes a gambler's cop with a little bit of sleeving and it achieves what could look like a pseudo card cheating demonstration. Personally, I only ever use this as a way of exposing just how beautiful sleight of hand and the mechanics of deception can really be. Today I'm using the Blue Mint playing cards. I think these are called the Blueberry playing cards. These are the second edition from 52 cards. Beautiful deck of playing cards. I'm going to be giving these away. Uh, stay tuned for details on that. But right now get yourself a deck of playing cards and let's get to the switch. Thanks Charlie. The intricacies of deception can only be fully appreciated through exposure. This switch, let's be fair, let's be honest, this switch is not going to work in real life. It is not going to work. So what do I do? Do I get rid of it? Do I yeet it out of my repertoire? No, I use it still. I use it as a way of exposing how beautiful Slide of Hand is. You might argue, some might argue that your hands, you need big hands for this trick. There's this misconception in magic where, oh, my hands are too small, I can't do this trick. No, that's not, that's not true. If your hands are too small, you find a way to adapt. If you think your hands are too small, you find a way to adapt. I've never once questioned whether my hands are small or not. I think they're fairly average, but if my hand is too small for a certain trick, I will adapt the trick. I won't just say, oh, and then stop doing it. I'll adapt, so. A um, little bit of spit there just landed on the nine of clubs. So you can do this with a watch. Uh, essentially what's happening, you've got the uh, king of diamonds in your sleeve. You have sleeved the uh, switching card. Nine of clubs goes here. I'm gonna reach underneath, grab the king of diamonds like this, and we're gonna switch like this. The slight compromise with that is that when, if I'm trying to deal a playing card from my, from my sleeve here, then this hand, the dealing hand has to go further up the arm, which is a discrepancy, discrepancy, which makes people ask, what is he doing? Right, we don't want people to ask the wrong kind of question. Anybody watching now who's afraid of duplicates? <laughs> ah, duplicates! Uh, don't worry, I'm gonna show you a way around this, but I wanna show you my full version, my the way that I do this completely. And I always have a nine of club duplicate so I'm gonna put one of my nine of clubs, oh, obviously it's on top. I'm gonna to put one of my nine of clubs up my sleeve, um, face up. So it's gonna go uh, on the back of my arm here. We'll stick to the two cards that I use in the, in the demo for this. King of diamonds, nine of clubs. We're gonna have the nine of clubs in play and I'm gonna shuffle it back into the deck. And I say, for me to demonstrate this trick correctly, I need to find a way to get the nine of clubs out of the deck and have it hidden on my sleeve. Fortunately, while I was shuffling, I already did that. Now I can show people that there's a nine of clubs on my sleeve. It adds this, this depth, it adds this really nice level to the deception because they think that, whoa, I didn't see that, that's amazing. For now, we're gonna have nine of clubs, it's on my sleeve, the deck's down, they know what's coming because I'm showing them. I'm not trying to hide this in my demonstration. I then take any playing card that's been dealt to me, in this case, our participant gave me the King of Diamonds and it's gonna go face up in my hand. The Nine of Clubs is gonna be clipped between fingers one and two like this as my hand comes over for the deal. My thumb presses down on top of the King of Diamonds as this is happening. So it's like this. I slide that card out to do as far out as I can, so it's behind my hand. Now this is where you're gonna 
question whether your hand's big enough or not because some people are not going to be able to hide a playing card behind their hand like this fortunately i can you don't necessarily need to fully hide it you're going to work on this it's going to take a lot of work on your part the cable diamond is here i've got the nine of clubs clipped here now i can leave it back here i can leave it far back until the very end and i can pull it out on one fell swoop nice or if I'm confident that my hand is big enough, I can slide the nine of clubs behind my hand, which is what I prefer to do. And then once I know it's in position and ready, I'm gonna press the king of diamonds down into my hand. Now notice the position of the king of diamonds it is already in position for a gambler's cop. I couldn't last a whole video without doing a gambler's cop. You know this about me already. So it's in a position for a gambler's cop. So if we lose the nine from now and focus on the king of diamonds, it's in this position, so it's ready for a gambler's cop. I'm gonna press down with my thumb. This allows me to make 100% sure that that king of diamonds is gonna end up in a gambler's cop. Now the things I need to look for when I'm doing this, when I press down, the index corner here cannot breach the flannel of my hand, I don't know what word this is. It cannot breach the top of my hand. So if it looks like this, then that's that's really bad. It's not gonna work. It has to be below this line on my hand. It's a diagonal angle like this. It points into my sleeve, this corner. This corner's gonna be hanging out. There's no way around that. And finger three or finger two want to be clipping that card in place, whatever feels the most comfortable at that moment. For me, it's usually for a bit of security, it's gonna be finger three because you know there's no way it's gonna point out of any unnecessary or unwanted positions if you use finger three, just something that I picked up. So I'm pushing it down. I'm pushing it down and then once I'm sure it's in there, I curl my hand to close my hand slightly and I pull this hand away, turn my hand face down. Not completely face down, I just wrist kill like this. You can do an invisible deal with this. There, it vanished. <laughs> so, like this. Now, 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 tie this in with the uh, Nine of Clubs behind your hand. So get used to this first. And don't, when you deal down, you're leaving your right left, you're leaving your left hand really dirty. What I mean by that, it's hiding a deception, it's dirty. So instinctively, intuitively, you're gonna want to hide that card, you're gonna wanna run away, you're gonna be a little bit afraid. If you're not used to deception, deceptive practices, that is. So instinctively, you go like this, you start to hide it, but really we wanna leave it out in the open. We don't want to take it away. So I'm gonna leave it here in a very natural position. I'm not gonna pretend that, that that's natural. I'm just gonna be natural. I'm just gonna let it go down. And for me, my hand's kind of retracted back a little bit towards the edge of the table as it is, so that looks natural like this. Tie that in with the nine of clubs. So put the nine of clubs in your sleeve, you can have it hanging out, whatever works best for you uh, in the retreat of that playing card, retrieval of that playing card. King of Diamonds face down here. I'm gonna show the back of it and the front of it just so you know that I'm only holding one playing card. Slowly I'm gonna come in for the deal. My fingers, one and two are clipping that card like this, slowly bringing it out and upwards. And then as it gets to about here, just breaching the sleeve, I'm gonna do the wrist kill action and I'm gonna pull the nine of clubs to the side. One thing I need to do when I do this, when I, when I clear the hand, the nine of clubs is between fingers one and two. This is a discrepancy. So when it comes out, I need to put my thumb on the back or on the face of the nine of clubs. So it looks like I'm, I'm dealing it from that hand. So your thumb's essentially gonna slide off of the king of diamonds onto the nine of clubs. And then you're gonna put it down and then push it forward. Now you can step back. Now you can if you want. If you're not doing this the way that I do as an exposure demonstration, then at this point, then you're free to just get rid of the, the king. You can lap it, you can ditch it, you can savant it, you can get it in your pocket, whatever. Because at this point, everybody's looking at the nine of clubs. First thing I found everybody wants to do at this point, even when I'm showing them how it works, they want to see on the other side of the nine of clubs. For some reason, people think that this is going to have something to do with it because it kind of came from nowhere. So from this position, 
we go like this and then I come back turn it face up this is a good moment for me to ditch the king of diamonds but like I keep saying for me this is a trick of exposure so I'm gonna expose the trick if I don't want to do it all in one go which I like to do I like to come in like this slowly and then do the deal if I don't want to do that I can get ready up, up up front I can get ready first by bringing the nine up here waiting a few moments and then dealing I think I'm gonna finish there because I'm very conscious of the time I think I've said everything that I wanted to say about this deception at this moment so that's right Charlie Madison I hope you enjoyed that switch. I'll be in the comment section after this video. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to give these playing cards away just yet because I didn't use them as much as I wanted to in this video. In fact, I'm going to give away all three of the decks that my boy Assad sent me from 52 cards. These are the mint playing cards. They are beautiful. I've used these two decks, the white one and the green one, a few times, but it's the first time I've used the blue ones. And I want to get a little bit more use out of these, but I will be giving away all three to a lucky member of the Alliance. I'll leave a link in the video description. I'll back soon with some more dope tutorials all that's going to turn make sure you subscribe so you get my notification bell going every time i drop a new tutorial thank you charlie i'm daniel madison see you next time